Hey, it's Lyle Wells with The Flippin' Group. It's so good to be with you and just want you to know what an honor it is for our team and for I to serve you. Um, to come alongside of you and help you with all of your challenges and specifically recently we've been talking about the Common Core State Standards Initiative and we've gotten great feedback from the video that we, re that we shared with you called the seven keys to effective and smooth implementation of the Common Core State Standards. And uh, so many educators have told us that video was helpful, um, not just in clarifying the path forward, but in helping reduce their anxiety about that process. If you haven't had a chance to see that video, there's a link right now on the screen above my head where you can click on and see that entire video. Knowing what to do is only half the battle. The other half lies in knowing how to do it. So many times we have a clear understanding of what we need to do, but no path forward. Well, if you're sitting here thinking about how am I going to implement the Common Core State Standards, there are really essentially three options. Option number one would be this, do all the work in-house. Now initially that option sounds like the most cost effective. We'll use our people, we'll do it our way, but let me caution you against some potential hidden costs there. There's a financial cost of pulling teachers out and, and having to backfill with substitute teachers. That can get very expensive very quickly. But there's also other costs. Uh, the quality of instruction. When we're taking out high, high quality teachers and replacing them with substitutes who may have teaching skill, but because of the dynamics, the impact of instruction is still there. There's also the fatigue factor. As we continue to load up on some of our best and our brightest educators and we put more and more on them and we keep them later in the school day or we bring them in earlier in the morning to meet and work on this, we, we fatigue them and we drain them of their most valuable resource and that's the inspiration and the energy that they have for doing the great job that they do. So please let me caution you against those hidden costs of doing it in-house. The second thing would be to hire a consultant to do all the work. Now, initially, I like this idea a lot. We're going to protect instructional time. We're going to protect our best people. Uh, that's a really viable option, and it's a good one, provided this, that the people that you hire have a heart to share and transfer DNA with you. Because if they come in and they only use their experiences and, and their expertise to produce a product, and they don't invest in your people, what's going to happen is you'll get to implementation, but sustainability will be a real concern because you're left with an empty bag because when they go, there goes their experiences and there goes their expertise. Option three would be to invest in a comprehensive solution. Option three is where we hire outside people. We get their expertise, we get their knowledge, we get their experiences. But, but we bring people in with the expectation that the solution will be based on an integrated approach where the experts teach our people, where they grow our people so that the DNA is transferred, so that the sustainability is there because that's the most important part of this process. We don't want to spike with implementation and then see scores start to fall off again. What we want to see is performance continue to grow to a high level and stay there. Comprehensive approach would be the approach number three. It'd be very similar to if I wanted to remodel a room in my house. Well, first option, initially, sounds good on paper, the cheapest option would be do all the work myself. But the hidden cost of the amount of time it would take me to remodel that room, that I couldn't be doing other things, the hidden cost of the fact that I'm not an expert and there may be some false starts and I won't know all the resources that I'll need so it'll be multiple trips back and forth to the hardware store. Those hidden costs may become too great. The second option would be hire a contractor who's brilliant, who's done it, but if I don't hire a contractor that, that's concerned about growing me or teaching me, when they leave, when they walk out the door with their tools and their talents, what I'm left with is one great room and no abilities to sustain the remodeling process. Number three would be the comprehensive approach. It would be the one I'd prefer because now I'd bring in a very talented, a very gifted home remodeler, a carpenter, a contractor who's gifted. But if they have the heart to share those gifts and talents with me, 
I would grow as well. And so at the end of that process, I'd have an amazing looking room, but I'd also have the talents and the tools and the confidence to move forward and sustain the remodeling project. Now, again, you may not be at a decision point, but if you're even considering a comprehensive approach, if you're even thinking about option three, let me give you just a little more to think about before you take that step. If you're gonna go with a comprehensive approach, then I want you to consider the 10 guidelines to implementing the Common Core State Standards. These are 10 guides that are gonna help you direct where you want your process to go. The first is simply curriculum. We all need curriculum that's aligned and curriculum that we can articulate to our people because when there's clarity, it increases motivation and performance. The second thing is the ability in our teachers to grow critical thinking skills. We wanna see our teachers skilled and confident in this ability to give that to their students. The third is the essential learning elements. Every lesson has those essential pieces that students need to learn and developing tools and processes where teachers understand those and can deliver on those is critical to the success of this implementation. Number four would be the ability to implement walkthroughs that are both intentional and impactful on the practice of teaching. Being able to collect data that can move the needle on a teacher's performance. Speaking of data, the fifth element would be the ability to analyze data effectively to understand what metrics are really telling us about student performance and teacher effectiveness. Number six is interventions. What happens when the data tells us that there are students that are falling behind or students that need to be supported in a different or a more unique way? Interventions are critical. Number seven is teams. We know that transformation comes as part of a team activity. And so building effective teams Teams where there is communication and with the goal of transformation is critical. Number eight is relationships. We understand we're in a relational intensive business. And so whether it's administrator to teacher, teacher to teacher, teacher to student, or student to student, all of those critical relationships help facilitate the implementation of the Common Core State Standards. And so the ability to model and build those relationships is essential. Number nine is culture. If leadership's the behavior that influences others and drives outcomes, we understand that an organization's culture is just a collection of their behaviors. So how do we model and how do we grow effective behaviors that impact our culture? And number 10 is coaching. We all need help to grow. We say feedback is the breakfast of champions and feedback from an effective, experienced coach who understands the process and has built the relational capacity with us to give us that feedback is one of the most dynamic ways we can impact the process of teaching students. Now, if you're interested in the comprehensive model, if you find value in that and you're intrigued by it, that's why we've established the Common Core Connection. Now, we're all familiar with Common Core, but our goal is to help you connect the dots to take the resources, the time, the people, the curriculum, and align it and connect those dots so that the legislation truly is seen in the lesson plan and the lesson plan translates to a higher level of learning than students have ever experienced before. Now, how do we do that? Well, we start with a curriculum guide. We've talked about an action plan and a roadmap and our curriculum guide in depth vertically aligned K through 12 is the best tool that we can possibly offer you to help you reach your objectives and fulfill your vision. So this is the trail guide, but you're going to need trail leaders to guide you on that path. And so we're going to do professional development and intense pouring into of five of your most action minded leaders, five educators who are committed to this process that you select your highest and best talents, we're gonna pour into them so they can be the trail leaders on this path, leading others, educating others in your district along the way. And then finally, we're gonna provide custom coaching. Now, we understand, we've sat in your chair, and we know that as an educational leader, no day's the same. 
No district's the same. No community's the same. And so we're not offering a cookie cutter solution. We're bringing you custom coaching where we can hear your heart and we can help you identify the challenges and the solutions that you need in your particular situation. Now, these are just three big, big pieces of this solution that we're offering to you. There's so much more, but I don't have time to tell you. But I do have one request. I want you to click on, on the button below me, and I want to introduce you to Debbie Payne. Debbie Payne is an amazing educator. She's a friend and a trusted resource for me. Debbie has over 25 years of experience as an educator in the classroom and at the district level. She has seen curriculum from the desk to the boardroom, and she understands how to navigate this challenge. In fact, she's helped hundreds of people with their curriculum challenges related just to the Common Core State Standards Initiative, and she's helped thousands around the world with other curriculum challenges. I want to offer you an opportunity to meet with Debbie for one hour over the phone. When you click, you'll have direct access to her calendar, and you can schedule a time that's convenient for you so you can sit down and talk to this amazing curriculum expert. You can ask her your most challenging CCSS questions, and you can receive some personalized coaching from her on how to move forward in this unique path. I want to challenge you to do this right now. I know we always think we don't have time, and I will tell you right now, this is an investment of time that will be a great resource to you. Debbie has helped me go from where I want to be to where I need to be as an educator, and I know she can do the same for you.